Hi there, this is Robin Andrews from Comp Academy, and this is a video about a game called Lightbot, which is a great way to learn about procedures in programming. Now, I'm a great believer in when learning anything to deal with the concrete stuff, the stuff you can actually experience before getting too abstract. And I'd say if you're learning to program and you're learning about functions, it's a great idea if you've got some kind of experience to relate that to, rather than just learning about them as an abstract concept. So that's why I love this game. So let's dive in. It's going to need Flash. So if we use the Flash version. Now I need to enable Flash because Chrome does not have it enabled by default. And in fact, by the end of, I think this year, 2020, there's going to be no support for Flash. I'm not sure how it's going to play out in terms of all these great games that are available at the moment. But for now, till December, we've got this available. So we're going to allow Flash. And it just takes a moment to load up. Okay, and we're going to dive right ahead and go to not just the basics. I mean, if you want to have a kind of warm up and just learn how the thing works and play around in the basics, but we're going to go straight to procedures. Okay. So the way this works is these are the instructions so you can read those in your own time. But we have the opportunity here to have some instructions for our robot. And basically he has to go to these blue squares and light them up by doing the light bulb command on them. But what we're doing here is we're trying to identify repeated units of instructions because you could, in theory, you could do all of these instructions in what we call the main function or the main procedure here. So we could go forward, 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 and then we could jump and then we could turn, I believe that's the correct direction, and then forward, forward, and then forward again, and then do the thing. You see what I mean? You could have all the individual steps. Let's see what that does so far. Okay, that's fine. But we're going to run out because we still need to turn again and we still need to go forward, forward, and then we haven't got a remaining slot. Okay, so this is not a very efficient use of our instructions. What we're going to do in instead is we're going to identify the repeating part and then call that sequence again and again, right? Or however many times we need it. So if I reset this, I'm doing great apparently, which is nice which is nice. <laughs> Some of you might get that reference. Um, so what's the repeating part? We're definitely going forward. So what I'm going to do is put the repeating part into the procedure, right? And then forward, 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 jump. We can see that's a sequence of instructions that we're going to need multiple times, or at least three times, okay? So what we can then do is we can call that sequence as P1 in our main procedure. And I'll show you what that does. It executes everything that was in there. But then the magic of it is we can just call that sequence again, but we should rotate first, okay? So we can put that rotation in between those two. Um, so there we go. So now if I run that, you'll see that it does it once, it turns, and then it does it again. So we can just repeat this pattern here in our main function. Uh, so that's P1, procedure one, okay? And that should do the trick. So there it is. That's a really great way to learn about procedures while not really feeling like you're learning because you're just having fun along the way. So let's look at the next one. So the key is to identify the repeating parts here. So we're definitely going to need to go forward one, and that's going in our procedure. Okay, so we're going forward one, and then we're going to turn. And then we're going to go forward another one. And then we're going to turn the other way. See, that looks to me like that's the repeating section. So let's call that, call it a couple of times to make sure we got it right. That's good to me. So that was twice. So if we do it twice more, okay, and then at the end, we light up the, the bulb. Ta-da! Okay, so hopefully you can see that this is a great fun way of learning about procedures, which can then give yourself or your students a reference point later on when you're learning procedures and functions in a programming language. You can say to them or remind yourself, aha, what was I doing in that light bulb game? Okay, I was having these reusable bits of code. That's what this P1 means. It's a procedure that's reusable. Yeah? Um, I sometimes say about functions or procedures, it's like having an instruction book on a shelf. 
So you've written all these instructions, but you're not actually deciding to get it off the shelf until you need it. And then when you want to actually execute or read those instructions, that's when you call the procedure yeah? and then you get it down off the shelf, read through the instructions, yeah, put it back when you're finished. Yeah. So I think that's it really very short video, but I just wanted to share this great, uh, this great game. It's kind of my philosophy really of learning and teaching is keep it fun, keep it engaging. And then the learning happens naturally. And then if you want to get a little bit more involved in the theory, then you've got a reference point, you've got some experience. So those concepts actually have some meaning to you. Okay. So there it is, light bulb for you folks. Hope you enjoy it. I'll put the uh, link in the description and I'll see you next time. Take care.